Lumanovay. I am Emine Lumanova, the mother of Refat Alimov. My son is currently in a detention center in the Russian city Rostov. He's on trial in a military district court. I was present in court three times. I saw him and all the guys. They're holding up well. There are six of them. The first four were taken during searches on February 11th, 2016. And two months later, two more were taken. My son and my neighbor. The first four were taken during searches on February 11th, 2016. And two months later, two more were taken. My son and my neighbor in the Krasnokamyanka village. They accused him of belonging to the organization Hizbut Tahrir. At first, I didn't even know how to pronounce this name. I had no idea what it was how this could be. But I want to say that he absolutely did not belong to anything of the kind. My son works, rather worked, he probably won't keep working in this system, as a sales representative. He had only one day off, which he devoted to football. He loved football. I'm retired. I'm the mother of three children. I have two daughters and my son is the middle child. It happened that they took him away and he didn't even manage to marry. When we see each other in court or on visits, he reassures me, Mom, don't worry, everything will be resolved soon, they'll prove our innocence. One day in court, I had never really listened to the words of the investigating judge. I heard the phrase that they had found items at home that could be used to commit a crime. Absolutely not. They took the case of my son's computer and they took a notebook where he had written prayers. He was studying namaz. Later, they returned that notebook to me, along with two DVDs, performing namaz and the life of the prophet. And then when they returned them, I asked the investigator, you're returning the object evidence. Why not let the boy go, since he's not guilty? Furthermore, these items you took cannot be used to commit a crime. They're not explosive devices or arms, right? How can they? He's had serious problems with his health ever since 2014, when he had an attack. It turned out that he had kidney stone disease. He had a stone in his ureter. I don't know whether he saw that stone pass, but he had another attack last year in the detention center. And when he asked again for help, for them to do something, they said, you're faking. Is it really possible to fake such pain and take those painkillers just like that? I don't understand it, and I don't understand the attitude of the detention centre staff toward those who are illegally sentenced, illegally imprisoned under investigation. They have no grounds to hold them there, I believe, because there is no fact of the crime. I can't help crying because I gained a great, big, warm-hearted family. First, I gradually began getting to know those people from our Yalta group because they were the first ones taken. I've acquired four more families, four more families into my own. It's impossible to convey, honestly. Now there are more of us. And then in May, the four from Bakhtia Sarai. There are a lot of us now. We keep in touch. Our compatriots help us. We have our people. If it wasn't for that, our people and their assistants, I don't know how we could survive in that situation. In the Simferopol detention center, conditions were worse. There were bed bugs and mice and dampness. And he went through a lot of medicine when he was in Simferopol. In Rostov, it's okay. At least there are no bed bugs. I saw him in court. Sometimes you catch each other's eye and gesture something. I signed. Are they biting? Not biting. He replied, everything's okay. That makes me happy. Despite these conditions, they pray namaz five times a day. They all adhere to it. He says, my hope is in the Almighty, and he will help us. In the near future, we will all get out of here. I've lived in Crimea for 26 years, and in those 26 years, there's never been an act of terrorism here, nor should there be. But for some reason, as soon as the government changed, they immediately began looking for terrorists among Muslims.